and these people from the political process. So one thing is some form of reconciliation, and she's one of the few leaders from the, from the majority Burman ethnic group that the ethnic nationalities, the minority groups, trust. So she has a p powerful potential for reconciliation within the country. Then I think building um, a broader-based movement. The NLD, her party, was disbanded because of pressures from the regime. Um, there's real potential for her to build a much broader based movement which isn't confined by, the, by what was the previous National League for Democracy. And that would include the ethnic nationalities, civil society groups, other political parties that were part of the pro-democracy pro movement but have been in some way um, you know, um, it's fragmented and could be unified and could be strengthened. So there's a potential to do that as well. John Jackson speaking there. Well, in a few minutes, we'll be joined by viewers on BBC One when Riz Latif will have the very latest news and sport. In the meantime, if you're away from the television and want to keep up to date, you can watch BBC News Live on the web. Go to bbc.co.uk slash news and click on the link. The face of Burma's democracy movement, Aung San Suu Kyi, has been released from house arrest. She spent seven years confined to her home. She called on the Burmese people to now work together. Her release brought thousands of jubilant supporters to her compound in Rangoon. The Irish government is in talks about a European bailout for the country's ailing economy. a superb victory for England in a thrilling match against Australia. Hello and good evening. After more than seven years under house arrest, the Burmese pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi has been released by the country's military rulers. On hearing the news, crowds of her followers rushed to her compound in Rangoon. She told them, we must work together in unison. The Nobel Peace Prize laureate had been detained for 15 of the past 21 years, but her detention order ended today. Our World Affairs editor, John Simpson, reports from Rangoon. By late afternoon, Aung San Suu Kyi's supporters were starting to worry whether she would be free today after all. The government forces who blocked off the road to her house looked immovable. It's quarter past four. The sun's just starting to go down. But the standoff is as firm as ever. And nobody really knows what's going to happen. Neither the demonstrators who are sitting down here, nor indeed the soldiers and riot police behind them. But then... Suddenly, the road was clear and the race was on. The crowd fetched up at the gate to her house. And then a quite unforgettable moment. Aung San Suu Kyi, a free woman, walking to meet her people. By now, she'd twined some flowers in her hair, which someone had given her. She'd clearly worked out very carefully what 